Thanks so much, Marlis. And thanks to uh, the Rotman Events team and Karen Christensen, the editor of the Rotman Magazine, for uh, the opportunity to contribute to this conversation, uh, which is so important and exciting. My co-author on this project, Jason Suckram, is a graduate of Rotman's MBA program and a senior manager now at the Mars Discovery District Center for Impact Investing. And I know he's listening as well. So uh, excited to have you here, Jason. So the basic points in the article that Jason and I wrote, which is called No Going Back, is that the pandemic has exposed and amplified, you know, really every problem with the old normal. Okay, every, everything that we knew was a problem back in the old sort of way of doing things has been uh, really exacerbated and, and made uh, uh, kind of visible and, and, you know, has been um, intensified as a result of this. If you think about uh, different stakeholder groups, the problems are a little bit different. There have been uh, permanent shifts and declines in consumption. We know that that's true for some important industries like travel and restaurants and even financial services but also lots of changes in product needs. Uh, we all uh, are communicating here online, uh, a real opportunity for online exchange, of course, uh, as a result of the pandemic directly because of the distance requirements that we all are working under, but also some industries where we know fundamental transformation has to occur, for example, in elder care, which um, is, is simply untenable on the old model uh, anymore. There have been a lot of changes for employees too, working from home, trauma of essential workers that are exhausted and continue to have to go expose themselves to, uh, uh, to, uh, to danger every day. And, you know, the inequalities associated with um, uh, the, the way the distribution of work are also very visible to us now. We know that people of color, especially um, uh, in the United States, where I'm uh, calling in from now, uh, 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 there's been a tremendous movement in the United States that Black Lives Matter. We have to think about that very differently than we did uh, ever before and really take on uh, the challenge. All sorts of questions about job security, suppliers and supply chains, investors, governments. Governments have enormous fiscal uh, exposure that they didn't have before. And all of these things are problems that existed prior to the pandemic that have been uh, intensified. So the question that Jason and I seek to address in our article is how do we go forward? And uh, there's a lot that we say in the article that I don't have time to cover now, but just to give you sort of a, a flavor of what we discuss, what we argue is that each organization should go back to its mission and address uh, the opportunity to create value at a fundamental level. You know, the, the window is open now. Uh, for fundamental change, and you know, th it's time. We have to address some of the the old arguments that no longer hold water on why we can't make progress. Uh, for example, we need climate action uh, with ac with economic growth. We need growth with responsible consumption. We need to figure out how to fix our food systems, which uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, exposed information about food system as a result of the pandemic. All of this has to get uh, ha has to get addressed. So uh, the, the argument that Jason and I make uh, to accomplish this is as, uh, as organizations and organizational leaders start to think about how they're gonna move forward here is what we argue here, and let me see if I can make my slides work, is that the agenda should be oriented around uh, the guidance that's provided by the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which were uh, uh, developed over extensive consultation with experts uh, over a period of time and provide us with a kind of framework for thinking about how to deal with the trade-offs uh, that um, that uh, previously constrained organizations and uh, that are currently being lifted. So let me just give you uh, just a brief overview of these. Uh, there are several um, sustainable development goals among the 17 that deal with social development. Uh, goals such as no poverty and zero hunger, uh, good health and well-being. Uh, quality education, and then down below, decent work and economic growth. Uh, there's a, quite a bit here about remediating inequality, Black Lives Matter. We have to think about indigenous uh, concerns within Canada. Lots of issues having to do with, um, you know, decent work, quality work for essential workers. There's quite a few about the environment uh, and economic development more generally, the institutional development that we need in order to be able to pull this off. And what Jason and I discuss in the article is five really high impact areas where trade-offs between these different goals, such as, you know, creating economic growth without wrecking the climate, create, remediating inequalities without actually 
uh, 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 dampening uh, in general the 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 the, um, uh, the quality of life of people who are vulnerable. For example, we want to create jobs. We want those jobs to be a better quality than some of the essential work that people have been doing during the uh, during the pandemic. So where are the biggest opportunities? And we point to five that I wanted to just briefly touch on here as a, a way to start our conversation here. The first is that the door is open on getting any organization that touches on good health and well-being reconfigured to be able to deliver value. You know, there are a couple of obvious sectors where good health and well-being can be developed. Marlis just introduced herself as a physician. In the field of medicine, health delivery, medical devices and equipment, medical training, which we do at the University of Toronto, there is a, a, a long list uh, from you know, getting rid of fax machines to training physicians differently, uh, of long list of things that we've wanted to do for a long time. And there's been all sorts of excuses as to why we couldn't do it. Uh, but the window is open now and time is now to uh, start to make progress on those on those fronts. There are other sectors as well that touch on good health and well-being where there also is opportunity, such as you know, uh, food systems. I was listening today to a great lecture uh, at the Rotman School about how our entire way of thinking about nutrition is based on a kind of post-industrial approach to fortifying high carbohydrate foods. That needs to be rethought. We need to think about how to reconfigure the restaurant side and uh, the residential side of food systems differently. Any company that can get aligned with uh, delivering better health uh, quickly is, is going to find a mandate for that kind of change at this point. The second uh, uh, big opportunity that's right on our doorstep has to do with responsible consumption and production. And here I'm going to argue against some uh, economists that have been describing how prices need to be raised uh, in order to be able to uh, get to where we need to go on uh, responsible cons consumption. There are some arguments for capitalism that say, you know, the real thing we need to do is raise prices. I don't think so. I think we need to figure out how to engender a responsible consumption and production without raising prices to intensify poverty and inequality. Uh, this picture that I have here is a picture of, of the Eastern and Western garbage patch in the Pacific Ocean, each of which is greater in size than the state of Texas. Uh, this, these garbage patches have emerged through dumping in the ocean, and this is just not acceptable anymore. We have to figure out how to uh, innovate, uh, not just in the way we dispose of waste, but also in what we consume. So uh, a step away from disposable consumer goods like toys and diapers, away from traditional marketing and advertising, and uh, a lowering of prices in the uh, dismissal of uh, fees that weren't fair in the first place, like roaming fees on your cell phone and banking charges and so on. So lots of opportunity here. The third has to do with uh, affordable energy, uh, clean energy and climate action. You know, the climate, we, we know from the pandemic that climate improvement is accessible, that be, large scale behavior change is possible. So any argument from before uh, the pandemic that those things could not be accomplished is out the window. We have to take this on and we have to do it urgently. The fourth, and there's much more in the article on this, so I'm just going over these ideas quickly here, but the fourth is this idea that decent work, sustainable group work that doesn't just enfranchise people already have voices or mostly men and white men in this photo here, we have to figure out how to hear the unheard, how to make decent work that's accessible for everyone. Uh, there's a whole sort of series of issues having to do with localness of opportunity for companies where you know, companies have to really think through the welfare of their, of their communities and the communities around their consumers, around their, uh, around their employees, collaborate locally differently to, to really make a, a, a big impact. The fifth that we discuss has to do with innovating. And, you know, again, uh, in the interest of time, I'll, I'll be uh, very succinct here, but the old models that sought to take our old industrial infrastructure and export them to emerging markets, export that infrastructure and those practices and ideas to emerging markets, just don't cut it anymore. We have to bring the best of our technologies be inclusive, respectful, and innovative in the way that we export opportunity to emerging markets. 
So the, the, the bottom line is that uh, there's no going back. We have to be creative at scale here to come up with really remarkable new systems that solve some of the overwhelming challenges that were built into our economic life uh, prior to the pandemic. That's the invitation, that's the opportunity that we have.